All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, we're gonna to be painting a simple, large seascape. With brushes and palette knife, trying to keep it as simple as possible. It's a large painting, so we're trying to get as much done in as little time as possible. So I'm gonna show you a few techniques I've learned over the years, and what we're gonna do is block everything in, move it around, and hopefully, a lovely painting, an acceptable picture. All right, well, this is going to be a bit of fun. Let's do this. All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Today, my favourite thing, massive plein air painting, full sun, Got a beautiful coastal scene this time, painting on a whiteboard, tons of oil paint. I'll be using a palette knife. I'm also gonna use some brushes. Should be great fun. I cannot wait to get started. It's been a while since I've been out painting, so this should be great fun. All right, so what I've already done is basically just blocked in. By the way, it is blowing a gale and there's a million flies around me but I've got a better mic system these days, so hopefully it'll all be okay. Okay, now I've just blocked in a few darks just to get the composition and get me started. Now I'll go for the biggest differences between this and that. All right, I reckon I'll start with the sky. So, what have we got here? Hopefully we don't get too many flies landing on what we're doing here, because there's plenty of them around. So we'll go for some titanium white and burnt sienna, yellow ochre, more white. Now I'm gonna add a bit of ultramarine blue to knock it back. I'm trying to paint the uh, right on the edge, just the horizon where it's quite uh, keyed down. So it needs to be not just a straight blue, it needs a few other colors to tone it back. So I'm gonna use an ultramarine blue today and a thalo. Normally I've been working with the cobalt blue, but today I'm gonna to jump between thalo blue and ultramarine. Which is kind of jumping either side of cobalt. Okay, so what do we got here? Nice little brew, uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, bit of ultramarine blue, and some white. Now let me just have a look. It's kind of a mucky, muddy color, but down low you've got the coastal haze so now I'm going to be working with brushes today like I said as well as the knife I find when I'm working on board that working with brushes as well as knife seems to be the way to go because it's a bit harder it needs the brushes to soften when you got the canvas the canvas will flex so you can get the softness anyway But when you've got a board, you just got to work. You know, got to soften with the brush as well, I find. Now I've just added a little bit more ultramarine blue. I'm trying to just grey it off a little bit more. With that real coastal haze down low, what do we got here? Yeah, no, I've got to go way more than that. Let's go blue and a bit of magenta and some white. So I've got more of a light, oh, fly, <laughs> fly in my ear. So I've got a kind of light grey hazy colour. Okay, let's have a look. That's more what I'm after. Now I'm just going to block it in first like so. Just get it in there. And I'll get the brush out in a minute and I'll push it all around and we'll see how it goes. I'm not quite touching the horizon yet because that light and dark tone put together will equal mess so we don't want to do that so we'll get more refined as the day goes on but for now let's just get those tones in there now luckily with a painting so big I'm usually standing out of the way I'll find when I'm painting with those little ones it can be a real hassle getting in the way as I'm painting because the camera you know all that sort of stuff all right what are we doing bit more yellow ochre, bit more white, just making it up as I go. Let's 
getting to a more yellow ochre feel up here. There's a lot of reflection up there in the sky and you may think, what are you doing? This is crazy and it may well be, but this is just what I'm feeling like it needs at the time. So I'm just going to go with that. Right. Bit of phthalo blue I reckon and white. It's a ripper strong colour that phthalo blue. Oh, very, very strong. You only need a twang of it and bang, you've got tons of chromatic saturation. So, <laughs> I've put the smallest amount in and it seriously changed that whole bit of mud I was mixing here into a really bright colour. Let's have a look. Look at the difference, that's mental. Okay, needs a bit more burnt sienna and white. Bit more yellow ochre. Just to blend it into not quite such a bright colour yet. I'll get brighter as I go up. What a lovely day. What a lovely fly blown day. You can see with the palette knife, you can really move the paint around. Look at that. Instead of putting like thin little layers, you're putting tons on all at once and surely that's more fun. It has to be more fun. All these flies, yeah, just a, <laughs> it's part, it's nothing the, uh, they never talk about the uh, flies in the tourist brochures. They only ever talk about the beautiful things. But if you can get used to the flies, you've seriously got it made because Australia is a beautiful place. We'll just go for a little bit more ultramarine blue and white instead of the phthalo. Australia is a beautiful place and it's got heat and it's got flies, but if you can overcome them, those two things, you've got it made. Right, more ultramarine. Less of that green colour, more of a red blue. Speed up the mixing a bit more, look at that. That's better. Now see that, that's a better colour, that's starting to get into, it's got rid of the green colours. It's getting more into those kind of red-blue colours. And get those flies off, here we go. That's good, yeah. All right, now I'll go even bluer with some, with some more ultramarine. And redder because the, the ultramarine has a bit of red in it compared to the uh, thalo, which has a bit of green in it. So it's slightly darker, there's a bit less white. Look at that. Right. Just gonna clean an area here. I'll just stick that there. I might use it later for a bit of those salt bush colors. I just want a cleaner version of blue. So I want magenta, ultramarine, a really clean color without any thalo mixed up in the works because the thalo being a green will kill it a little because it's got a bit of green in it compared to the red in the colour I'm trying to mix so ultramarine blue with a little bit of magenta is a, is a red blue so keep the green out of it if you want to keep it a strong colour now I've got a bit of tape up there because when I go to put it in the car it gets very messy so I thought I'd put a bit of tape so I can peel that tape off to be able to stick it in the car and not, you know, creating a massive mess. I'll slide it into the box later on. When I get home, I may just cut off that piece of white that's left over so I can frame it better. So that board is just like that. That's a bit of a sacrifice board there where the tape is and there's a sacrifice fly in the works. Look at that. Another fly. Now what I'm going to do is start getting the brushes out like I said. What are we going out? <laughs> Look, it is blowing a gale out there. Right. Start blending a little bit. Just pulling those, oops, there goes the easel over there. It's got all the paint in it. I'm just pulling 
all those hazy colours down together closer to the horizon mixing and they're kind of mixing with the brush as we go not quite touching the water yet because that would cause a lot of drama like I just touched it then but oh well a little bit won't hurt all right now I'll start blending all this together like so start pulling it all in together just go crazy random strokes which will blend all that coastal haze into the sky color itself that's the beauty of working with the brush like this once you've put all heaps of paint on with the palette knife, you can really get stuck into speed then. Look at that. Plenty of speed. And so I'm just gradually working my way up and blending with crazy strokes until I get near the top. Look at the darkest at the top, blend that beautiful dark blue sky into the rest of the sky. There we go now. I like to do random strokes this way and that way, so plenty of variety and energy in the work. Right, now what I might do is, I haven't touched that brush yet, I'll stick that one out of the way. Just clean that off so I can get a bit of a cleaner mark in here. Just trying to blend that sky a little bit more. All right, I might just stand back and have a look. Now's the time to just get it all lovely, just mix it all in. So it looks like a blue. I'm sort of bringing the blues into that haze. So you've got to kind of haze and the blue all together, half mixed. Right, let's not muck around because time is a wasting. Right, I've got a bit of dark in here, which is the kind of, you know, the dark water out to sea now. I'll paint some of the shallow stuff. Just move all that beautiful blue. I've made too much, but oh well. Might come in handy later on. Okay. I'm gonna do, get rid of that, that's it. Now, that is a real high key color. So we've got yellow ochre, a twang of uh, viridian green and white. A bit of burnt sienna. More yellow ochre, less burnt sienna. Less flies. Yeah, that's a nice bright colour. Let's have a look. What do you got? No. Not too bad. That's probably better for down here. A little bit more yellow ochre and white. Just fine tuning as I go. Let's have a look. Yeah, that colour in there is kind of that colour, so pop that in and see how we go with that. nice. It's kind of fun working on board, I haven't done it for a little while, I really enjoy it. It's different than working on canvas. Now I'm going for less of the green and more of the burnt sienna and yellow ochre and white as it gets into the shallows. Down in here, quite shallow. Right, now as we get into some seaweed, burnt sienna and yellow ochre, less white. This kind of seaweed in here, this sort of colour, a little bit of blue with it to get rid of some of the saturation. Beautiful seaweedy colours. I mean. A bit more of them going out to sea here, hang on. What we got? Just here. Alright. 
pull them through. Aha, a bit of that sky blue from earlier. A bit more white in that sky blue. A bit less flies. Just rubbing a little bit of that on for the reflections are on the edge. Yellow ochre, burn sienna blue. We're doing here right. Come out a little bit further like that. Right, now that looks like a wild mess, but once we get the brush onto it, that'll really start to come together. Let's go for a bit of green and yellow ochre and white. Now hang on, I'll go higher key than that, so just going to go straight Viridian green and yellow ochre and white with no burnt sienna makes it a real bright popping colour. A bit more white with it. A bit, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, a bit more yellow ochre, a bit more green. This gives you that slightly deeper water. Pull the shallows in over here too. Right, now that's enough of mucking around with that. I'm gonna get the brush out and get started. Let's start blending this. Get this massive brush. Right, here we go. I'll start up here. Pull those darks together like so. Those dark deep water tones just pull it straight across with plenty of speed and energy. Yeah, that looks alright. Plenty of speed. And then I'll blend that into this and you'll see the seaweed all starting to melt in beautifully. Get that in there. Go to the edges. Look at those shallow waters now all coming in. It's amazing how quickly it changes once you get the brush out and start playing around like this. Oh, you can get those flies out of your face while you're doing it. Yep. Yeah. Right, I'll stand back and have a look, eh? Okay, that'll be enough playing with that one for now. Right, so now I'm going to paint some of these rocks on the edge there. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna and white. Very lightly touch. Just some of the rocks that are already out of the water. Just lightly pull it over. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre and white. Half mix, plenty of power. Pull them in. A bit more yellow ochre than that. I can see on the day there's more yellow ochre out, so it'll come in. Good. Yellow ochre, white. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, half mixed. More yellow ochre than that. Burnt sienna. It's very lightly pulling that beautiful rock ledge there. Right, 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 right. Now I've got a lot of tone. Much 
Bora! Nice and chunky in the foreground, so random stroke. You're really creating that feeling of, hang on. Really creating that feeling, oops, getting a bit of a mess here. Of all the energy and stuff. So I'm gonna add a bit of magenta now for the seaweed. There's some seaweed up on the beach here. which has got a lot more magenta in the mix. Beautiful color. Take advantage of that. Yeah, not quite that much magenta though, but so you just, you know, you just alter it at the time as you're going. A bit more white than that. Blue. I love all the random work you can just put into it, just thrash the paint on. Really thick and chunky in the foreground. Yellow and white for some cleaner beach sand up here. Back and have a look, eh? Red and green, yellow ochre. Knocking up a bit of those salt bushy greens down there. Lightly drag them on. Just touching to let the uh, undertone show through. Just plenty of them all together. Plenty of controlled chaos there. Okay, knock it back a bit. Knocking the foliage back a bit with a bit of magenta and blue thrown in as the distance recedes into the distance. Let's have a look. A little bit more burnt sienna. That wind is not letting up. Oh. Something I forgot to add earlier was a little bit of a Cad red and yellow, so I can get some bright oranges. So I just grab a little lapel of knife and I'll mix up some yellow and red to make an orange, mainly yellow, only a little bit of red. Put some white in it. A bit more yellow, a bit more yellow. A bit more white. Less flies. I'm going to make it a really high key colour. There's a beautiful cliff out there which is a real orange colour. So I've got to get that in just to work out where. 
don't worry about that noise. Just the pellet blowing over in the wind, the other pellet, which has got all the paint in it. It's lightly touching. Working on getting that headland nice. Might start here again, let's have a look what we got. Okay. Gotta take all the paint off here. I'm taking paint off as we speak. Gonna put some real high key stuff just there. A little bit just there. Now, I'll paint that beach in the distance. There's a distant beach. Go for a bit of cad white. Cad yellow and some white. Pull that beach in. Take some paint off on the underside like so. Get rid of those flies out of my face. Really juts out beautifully that little headland, so I'll make a feature of that. I'll right, stand back and have a look. Burn sienna, I'm just darkening a tone. As it gets closer to the uh, water's edge, take a bit of paint off. It's a darker tone because it's wet sand instead of being whatever else. Just trying to paint some real beautiful shallow water now over here. It's not quite so blue, it's more that colour. Beautiful shallow subtle tones out there, I'll tell you what, just get a bit of them in. I'll blend them a bit more in a minute, I'm just trying to get them in to start with. I want them a little bit more through here too, so I'll pull them in with the knife first. Grab a brush, grab a clean brush. Knock that pallet down straight up so we don't get those noises. Just get those real long marks to really feel that shallow water, like so. And pull through. Let's have a look at that, eh? Looking good, I just gotta change the composition a bit. Take some paint off here. Scrape a bit of paint off there. Right. Because what I want to do is add some of that beautiful light tone stuff I've been painting, that real shallow high key water, which is yellow ochre and tiniest bit of viridian green which really makes it pop is a bright sunny color it's really getting shallow out there now so you put that in like that really high key shallow stuff bit more of that. Seems such a nice little brew, I'll just keep on going with it, shall I? Yeah. In here, real shallow stuff. Now 
hole. Straight through to blend those shallow tones. Take a bit of paint off. It's getting too much paint there. I want to keep it clean. Sometimes you can just scrape the paint off like so and it really pulls out those high key colours. Now, always working with the biggest differences. What we need to do now is we've got to paint that distant headland. There's a distant headland which we can't quite see in the camera, but it's there. And I'll show you, I'll put some shots in so we can see it. I've got tons of flies that have landed up top. Oh well, it's all part of it. All right, so I'll make a distant headland color with some burnt siennas, yellow ochre. What do we got here? Let's have a look. Very lightly touch. It's a beautiful long headland. Oh, that wind is blowing that board around, shaking the board a bit. trying to get this detail and she's shaking around like you would not believe. But if it wasn't for the fact that I'm painting with this uh, easel and this set up here, there's no way I could paint this, like it's blowing a gale. You can't just paint this under normal conditions. That's the beauty of... Uh... Oh, I just keep on going, this beautiful headland keeps going out. That's the beauty of the plain air trailer. How is that board pumps in and out? I'm just trying to make up the difference and hit it in the right spot. Which is not necessarily an easy thing to do. Just painting the beach, the water level as it goes off. Gonna stick some beautiful clean sand in here, I can see it. Stick it in while I see it. In amongst the shallows is beautiful clean dry sand which really pops. Those flies are wreaking habit with me. Pumping board, how do you get a straight line with that? Kind of half did, I half got a straight line. Right. Just keep on going, because that headland goes on forever. Just 
taking a bit of paint off there, softening things and taking paint off. For some reason, flies love to land in the sky. I don't really work out why that is, but in a painting, I've found that they're always landing in the sky rather than anything else. It's kind of weird, but anyway, just the things you notice. On a straight edge, so I'm going to go for a bigger knife because there's more chance of getting a straight edge with a big knife. Painting the beaches and all the details. Just lightly pull through. Just trying to soften a little bit. Pulling through, send that horizon back a bit by softening it. And once I've softened it, then I'll rebuild it a bit. But I just had to send it back. And now I'll add again. And that way you get hard and soft, lost and found, which is always more interesting. Okay, so what do we got here? Let's just get a really fine brush, believe it or not, a fine brush, yes. <laughs> What I want to do is just mix up some of that grey horizon, so a bit of magentas and whites, get more white. So I'm mixing right on the horizon, right on the horizon where the most coastal haze is. See if we've got the tone right. Just needs to be a little bit darker because there's more particles in the air. So, painting a bit more of these shallow waters with the brush. Well, I've got it in my hand, might as well. Some people like me to use the brush because they use a brush, they like to see me use a brush also, so sometimes I do. Bit of yellow ochre, I mean not sorry yellow ochre, a cad yellow, a real bright cad yellow. Just want to introduce some more brightness and some more of that real bright sand colour through all these areas. Half mixing and blending. There's a phone ring and I can't answer that. Okay. It's looking all right. Yep, 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 yep. Let's just stand back and have a look.
right now. We'll just put all these down for a minute. Just get the big brush again. I'll clean the big brush. Just gonna blend that sky a bit more because as I'm finishing the painting more, I can see the sky needs a bit of work now. So not only that, it needs a few less flies. I just blend. I'll just grab a knife so I can flick flies out as I go. There's one, look at that. Ah. <laughs> Landed in my white beard, oh bugger it. Scoff them out. I think I got rid of it, right? Okay. Now I'll just get some more blending going. Short random marks. Imitating light, just break it all up. A feeling of light. Bring it down. Blend it up, just soften really. Really giving the illusion of light. Random marks, let's have a look. It's nice now. Some of that pale blue which is in the brush. Just lightly rub through. I'll grab a bit more of that pale blue. Some white. A bit more pale blue and white. There's a bit of that on the water where they are just very lightly with the wind skipping across the water. Just put a bit in, you don't overdo it. Now there's a lot of little buildings out there, that's why I left quite a lot of white in the painting here. There's actually little buildings, there's a little township, and so I've left a lot of white from the board, but now I'll just introduce a couple more little marks here and there for a few more buildings. Not too many, just to suggest it. The power of suggestion is a powerful thing indeed. Just going to introduce a little bit more light and shadow on those beautiful rocky, a beautiful rocky cliffy, not cliff, well you know what it is, weedy escarpment as it sticks out. Bit more white and green. A bit more green than that, sorry. Here we go. Just where it gets a bit deeper on the edge of these shallow waters. Go slightly more green, slightly less yellow ochre. 
you just got to put all those subtleties in if you really want to get it to pop. A bit more green, yellow ochre to make it those beautiful rich colours. Now, to give me an idea what's going on, I'm actually going to pull off, oh, I've got more flies again. I might take that tape off the bottom because it's very rough edge. It's kind of making it hard for me to judge what's going on. So I'll have a look at that. You can see there's a much cleaner edge there. Hopefully when I take that off, we don't get a disaster. This, this could get me in all sorts of strife, couldn't it? I guess you'll have fun watching me do that. Get all messed up in the wind. Yeah, it's got a bit of paint on that, but that won't hurt. Right. Now I can take that one off in theory and then put it back on. Okay, immediately you can see it's, it's already way more finished just by cleaning up that edge. Clean up a few things here and there. here that have gotten a bit lost. All right, well, that'll about do it. I got the big impression. Quite happy with what's going on there. We've got the uh, feeling of light, got beautiful water, you know, the shallow water. The lovely headlands jutting out with that beautiful shallow weed and everything else, fantastic. Nice little township in the distance, all great. All right, I'll get the camera off and we'll have a closer look. Okay, no worries. All right, well there's the scene, and a beautiful scene it is. Lovely day, a lot of wind out there, but a beautiful day. Now here's the pick. All right, now I really enjoyed painting this one. I really feel, feel like I captured something here. You can see that beautiful headland and the orange highlights and those shallow waters. Then you have that distant headland where it's all suggested. Little fine buildings, little bit of this, little bit of that. If you come in close, I contrast drastically with uh, much brighter colours and much chunkier paint. You can see here I've got some nice red highlights to help things ping and sting. And just random marks in general to really bring the foreground up. Some real subtle colours in this one. Now the water itself, I contrast that as chunkiness by going really fine and flat. And that really contrasts the difference between the water and the, and the land itself. You really get those chunky differences. There we go. Now you can see that head, those headlands, that particularly that middle one, the weed and all that. Yeah, if you paint thicker, you're more likely to get the impression of chunkiness as opposed to the thinness and the transparent qualities of water. It's a good contrasting trick. That deep weed out there is great. It really sets the distance off, those deep tones. So there you go, that's uh, 
all up a pretty good result I think under the conditions the blowing gale force conditions lucky the trailer was uh, allowing me to stand there in lee of the wind and uh, do all this okay there you go hope you enjoyed the painting and also if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe forward it on to your friends and spread the good word in general don't forget to uh, hit that notification bell and that way you'll be made aware of any video as I upload it. Alright, until next time, I'll see you later.